Hey everybody, welcome back. This is my um, wet hair color pencil drawing. It's going to be part three. Um, I'm going to work on this lower part now, which is going to be kind of fun and a challenge because I have actually had to draw in my own version of the feet because my reference photo the wet hair is sitting in grass and I don't want to have to put in the background I want to see his cute little feet and I want him to be isolated on this colored stock background that I've chosen where the drops can really show up I'm hoping so I had researched um, other hair pictures standing hair pictures um, Sue Cross Wildlife had a couple this is her photograph I follow her on Instagram and then I looked of course on the internet on Shutterstock on um, in Google and just trying to find standing hair pictures and so I came up with with this little stance of let's see if I can zoom in I need to <clears throat> zoom in on the, the bottom you can kind of see where I've got one foot out to the side, one foot pointed straight ahead. So I'm gonna be doing a little bit of guesswork down there. Um, that's okay. You know, if I get stumped, I'll look for more pictures, but I have a fairly good idea of what that's gonna look like down there. Um, but first, before I start on that, um, I looked at this so far when I took pictures and posted it on Instagram and I as always when I post pictures I can see places that I need to fix a little bit that I didn't see before I posted and what I noticed is that this area of the cheek is a little too light it needs to have a little bit more shadow so I'm very lightly taking my Kaput Mortem Violet and just lightly darkening it up. I want to give it a little bit more depth in there. And that's going to help push that back a little bit. Don't do it very hard. In the description of this video, in the previous two videos, I do have a list of the pencils that I'm using. If you want to try to use the same type of pencil or just for your reference. And I tried to list any materials that I've mentioned as well so I just think from the videos I have watched in the past it's just nice to know what other people are using and um, it's kind of a recommendation I like to know what other people like to use So I'm just gonna darken that up a little bit. I, using my Kaput Mortem Violet, this is a Faber-Castell Polychromos pencil, number 263, is that right? Gosh, yes, 263. <clears throat> and I'm gonna put a little bit more on this side, just shadows of these whiskers. And you can see that it's already getting a little bit more depth there, which is what it needed. And then under his chin, when I looked at it compared to the reference photo, I needed to darken here. So I'm going to take the Kaput Mortem Violet again, kind of on its side, and just lightly layer in a little bit more depth of color. Nothing huge, but something to... give it that depth it needs so you can show that his chin is sticking out in the sunshine over his little neck. I added a little bit of black in last time in the part two video to add more depth. I'll probably be adding a touch more here and there in this one. But right now I don't want to be too drastic so I'm just using the Kaput Mortem Violet A little bit more and it's almost just like a glazing of the color over it so the hair the fur that's underneath it still shows through it's just in more of a shadow just 
a really light glazing. <clears throat> Other places that needed a little bit more were right here. And I would encourage you, if you want to follow along more with the reference, I did not put the reference as a download in the description or anything, but it's very easy to find if you go to Sue Cross Wildlife on Instagram. You will not be sorry you did. If you love to draw, she's got so many neat subjects that you can choose from and she's okay with anybody using those to draw from. You just have to give her credit. You just have to say, hey, this photo is from Sue Cross Wildlife. <clears throat> and she is more than happy to let her, let you use her stuff. Okay, so there is a little, if you look at the reference, there's a little bit of wispies right here um, that kind of flow down into this portion. This is the, the section I'm going to work on now. I'm not going to finish this part until I get this penciled in so that can all flow together. Okay. And I've already kind of started this. I started this at the end of the last video, trying to get the flow of this, and then I ran out of time. I don't, I really don't want these videos to go much past 45 minutes or so. And I was at 50 minutes, and it was like, okay, now we're done. We're done. <coughs> Excuse me, I apologize. I have been fighting this cold. I've actually gotten over some sort of a respiratory flu, and then now... I'm telling you, I'm getting just a regular old cold. This is insane. So I will try to keep the hacking, the coughing, the sneezing to a minimum, but I cannot guarantee that it won't come up. So now, since I work in layers, I'm gonna lay a base layer of this fur down the left side. <clears throat> See if I can angle this just a little bit more to cover where I'm working. See if that helps. And you'll excuse me for moving. I'm just going to try to get this. I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. Okay, that should help. I've got my little tissue here that I'm just, this is not for my nose, I promise. This is to rest my hand on so I don't get a bunch of oils on the page. I really am not going to be touching the page with my hand much, um, at least where there's going to be pencil coming down later. But just to be sure. So this is a part now I can't see. It was it was normally covered up by grass. So I know that he's he's kind of tall, he's raising up, but yet he's wet. So he's not real fluffy down here because he's shaking off all that water. So I'm just gonna pencil in where the, the brown fur would be, and then we will come back in with some different layers to get the lighter patches of fur and the shadows and that where the water is flying off. But right now we're just laying in that base layer all the way down to his little foot. And I'm using the side of my pencil because I'm not trying to burnish this in. I'm layering right now. But I am layering in the direction that the fur <clears throat> would be flowing, whatever, if it's fur flow, laying, I guess we could say. In the direction it would be laying and I haven't even drawn in clumps yet I'm just getting that base layer down and then his little foot he's got like four little toes that face forward so in between those little toes it's gonna be darker because they're shadow so I know I can do that a little darker more with the point of my pencil And 
and then all these other areas will be a little lighter. So back to the side. And this is where the foot kind of comes forward. So I'm assuming that's going to be a little darker behind and a little lighter up front as the sun hits it. As the light hits it, so we'll see that differentiation. And we do have little, little bunny knuckles. I'm not going to get too worried about that just yet. And like I said, since I'm kind of making this part up, I will at times stop, go back to my reference photos that I had found earlier, and just make sure I'm kind of doing this okay. But this is kind of a straight on view of the foot, so it's not gonna be real tall. He's kind of um, twisting a little bit with his little waist. <clears throat> And now as I go back and add a few layers, I can look at some clumps and I can make these little clump groups of fur. As that water kind of weights them down a little bit. Just make some clump groups. Still always flowing in the right direction. I might give that a little bit more of a because I'm thinking But it's going to kind of layer up and over that foot a little bit. I'm thinking clumps and I'm not paying a ton attention of attention to my reference photo, just making sure I'm going in the right direction with the fur. Because <clears throat> at any moment, you know, the way he shakes, with the way he moves, with the way the wind blows, his fur could be laying in a different way. It just has to make sense with the light and shadows. And since he's got water kind of uh, running down, there will be a few deep, uh, oh, I, I want to almost call them rivulets. I don't know if that's out of word, um, of where water is flowing through his fur. Darking it up a little bit. If you look at the reference, see how it's darker over here? Even though that water's on top, I'm gonna to lay that darkness behind it. So it's a little darker. And then as we get to his tummy, um, I'm gonna try to downplay his little um, genital area there. Don't know what else to call it. It's just that's what it is, right? I just don't think that that's a, a fun thing to necessarily be focusing on, even though it's a fact of life. You know, we're not gonna totally ignore it, but 
um, I'm not going to make it as prominent. Art is prerogative, right? I'm noticing the bottom of his paw, especially since it's in the shadow, is a lot darker than what I have here. So I'm just gonna darken it up with a bit mortem first. I'll come back in with some black here in a minute. But I'm just gonna darken it up. Deep shadows where that paw is wet. So they're not soft shadow shadows in the fur there's if they're wet so they're you know deep and dark <clears throat> i think i'm packed in with my black it's just polychromos black really deepen it up Tell you, I love these polychromos. They just keep their points so wonderfully. Okay, that's a good start. We'll come back on that. I just wanted to get that laid in. So I can kind of sense that depth in there. You may have a different way to draw. You know, some people like to work all over. You know, lay a real base layer all over. Then lay the next layer all over. And then um, they kind of like to complete the picture all at once. I like to do that to a degree. I'll do a section at once. I won't do the whole picture. And it's just my preference. I kind of want to make sure the technique that I'm imagining in my head is going to work. <laughs> so that's why I'll work a section until I'll get it really, really close. I know I'll go back with some final detail, but I want to make sure it's, it's coming out the way I've envisioned it to come out. So this all is, is close to being done. I will go back and probably add some more detail. Um, but I'm confident that it's going to work the way I thought it was going to work. I'm happy with it. I'm happy with just these three colors that I'm using. I think that's kind of fun. <clears throat> so I'm ready to move on into this section. So what I'm doing now, his belly and the reference photo, the belly is really light. It's much lighter. It's almost, you know, we would look at that and say it's white. It's probably not really white, white. And especially since I don't have a white paper that I'm working on, I'm working on this tan paper. Um, I'm gonna come in with some Karen Dash white when it gets to that point. But right now, because I want some of this tan color, I'm laying that down really lightly. And he's got fur. You know, I'll lay that up there so you can kind of see, maybe that helps. He's got fur going in several different directions there. It's all clumpy. So I'm doing a clump, see there's a clump. There's a clump and I'm really light. This is really light. <clears throat> so what this color is actually gonna be doing, it's gonna be kind of my shadowy parts. I'm gonna lay it down like this first. I'm kind of just looking at the direction that all that fur goes in. And the cool thing about it, since I'm going at it so light, if I do happen to do it a little too dark, I can erase it. I've got my kneaded eraser, and I'm just gonna show you it. See how easily it comes off? Until I actually put several layers down and burnish it a little bit, it will come off fairly easy. So don't freak out. If you feel like, oh no, what have I done? <clears throat> I guarantee you haven't ruined it. Go back in with your eraser. That's what patience is all about. So now what I'm doing is I'm getting this part in. This is like his little top part of his leg. 
that I'm going to pencil in here. Just really lightly, because there's white that goes over it. And this is gonna come all the way down to the foot. I'm just going really lightly. And then this part, this part here, comes up this way. It comes out a little farther than his elbow. See, there's his elbow. It comes out a little farther. So, I'm going to pay attention to how much farther I want that to come out. He's actually shaking off some water, so that's the action of that fur flying as he's shaking that water off. So very lightly, I'm doing that clump there. And paying attention to how that fur looks right there. A little bit of a shadow. This is still all just with Caput Mortem. And then right here is a little bit of a darker place where it comes in, so I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a darker base. And then I'm assuming that that white is going to pretty much fill up this area down here. But not his paw. His paw will be this brown. We could put more done with some shadow in it. So I'm just going to lay that in really lightly. <clears throat> and there's a little bit of a shadow there. I think we can be safe to say I'm going to do some random little fur clumps down here. See how I'm switching direction back and forth? Really lightly right now. Because he's like, in my mind's eye, he's sitting on this piece of I don't know, paper, table, whatever it is that I'm putting him on. There's going to be a shadow down there. And his fur is going to kind of spill out a little bit. It's going to be like a little, a little Buddha bunny. A little bit more fur direction here. really light but as his fur sits on top of his foot what's going to happen is there's going to be some shadow there so I can darken that just a touch okay a little bit more shadow on the bottom because of course his foot is next to the table or whatever it is he's sitting on of a, I'm assuming they have little bunny, bunny toenails. You guys ever have rabbit's feet when you grew up, when you were growing up for good luck? That's what I'm thinking of is those rabbit's feet. Oh my goodness. And that fur all kind of goes towards the end. And it's going to be clumpy and it's going to be wet too, just like his hand. So we're going to give him a little bit more color down here. I really hope, I, I kind of watched some of these videos that I already posted and they didn't look real shaky. I don't know if I was just looking at a part that wasn't shaky, but I can see my phone shake as I draw. So it kind of worries me that you guys are thinking there's an earthquake here. There is not. <laughs> It's just me drawing on my table. Okay. Okay, so we got this base part in now a little bit. And then this part up here. 
because he's shaking so much. It's kind of all going back in space. very random with how I draw some of this fur direction. It's always in the right direction, but they're not lined up like nice little hairs, right? They're very on their own. They're long, they're flowy, they catch the wind. Okay, so I'm getting there. Still fairly light pressure. And this is more of a shadow under here. So I'm gonna use the side of my pencil and make it very soft. Now I'm digging in a little bit more here because this is the actual edge of his paw and it's going to be darker. Not a straight line. get crazy and draw straight lines on me. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Step back and look at it. A little lighter. They're too light right there, so I'm gonna darken it. Okay, now what I can do is with my Prismacolor blender, this is a Prismacolor colorless blender where you can really see the texture of the paper in these new areas that I have added. I'm going to burnish them out with this blender. The only color that really should be on this blender already is um, the Kaput Mortem or the black, but what you see I'm doing is I'm actually on the side of my reference photos. I'm, I'm just making sure there's no unexpected colors I don't really want there, so I just kind of rub it on there to clean it off. And then you just use the colorless blender, still going in the same direction as the fur. And you can see how that itself makes fur texture You might be looking at that going, and I'm not laying any color down. I am just manipulating the color, the pigment that is already on there. It's already on the paper from the color pencil. I'm just further manipula manipulating it. This is all part of drawing. All right. And I'm smoothing it out. When I smooth it out, it looks more realistic. It looks less like a drawing and I do try to draw more realism. <clears throat> if that's not your cup of tea, that's absolutely fine. There's room for all kinds of drawing styles. I like realism. I try to do something loose. I find myself coming back later <laughs> and making it more realistic. Oh my goodness. I have such a hard time with that. I'm just darkening that shadow under there a little bit more using a put mortem. <clears throat> but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna smooth out some of this uh, fur texture on this base layer. What that'll do is it'll smooth it out and it will allow me to add more color on top.
But the cool thing about blending, it's all part of that drawing process and you can get the textures you want. You can get fur texture just by using your blender. deliberately in some opposite directions because some of the fur would do that. Not too worried about the finished piece right now. I'm just getting that base layer smooth. And then I'm going to build on that. That's where you get your depth. That's where the depth came from up here. Is I put a base layer, then I just built on top of it. <clears throat> this all takes patience. But I tell you, it's therapeutic. At least it is for me. I'll put music on. I'll listen to a podcast. Love to listen to worship music and look out. Because then I start singing and then it gets really scary. Smoothing that out. Okay, go over here. Smooth these little wispies out. That he's shaking. phone stand is just almost in the way. See the motion that's already showing with with this blending? Just blending even the little bit of color that's on there. And I'm not pressing really hard. You don't have to press really hard. This I want to be really loose. Because there's going to be some white that kind of goes over it. And it looks real. You can tell on this. It just, <clears throat> where that white fur goes over it, it's going to be really soft. So I'm just trying to blend that out. And I can soften that edge even more if I want to by coming back in with my kneaded eraser and softening that edge. Okay, folks, just I just love this. Look at this, I just using the blender. Can you see the fur right there? All it did was like flip the blender up. Isn't that the coolest thing? And it's looking real. I think I want this to come out even more. I just feel like that should be, you know, I'm making that part up pretty much. I just feel like I want that to be out there more. So I'm gonna make that kind of come out a little bit more. I feel like that makes more sense to me. Kind of sitting back on his haunches, you know? <clears throat> Just planting himself down and having a good shake, getting that water off of him. this up right because I didn't have his feet in the picture that's a little better I think 
start showing some darker hairs in the direction where those are going. my blender oh it's in my hand oh my goodness I tell ya there we go we got a good first layer down here shadow because the light technically gosh the light I believe is hitting from this direction so that would be in shadow For, I just make sure you're kind of spazzy at it. This is not a bunny that's had a comb to him at any time in the recent past or probably ever will. So, what you see is what you get, right? <clears throat> Most he's done is he's had a bath, he's done something to get himself a bath. Hence this fun picture. Okay. A bit more shadow in here. I tell you, these water droplets are going to be interesting to draw. Now I'm going to soften with my kneaded eraser. I'm going to soften this edge a little bit, just barely. I think I'm going to Trying to decide the side. I think he needs a little bit more fur hanging down. Kind of spazzing a little bit over here. I'm doing it lightly, so if I don't like it, I can get rid of it if I need to. <clears throat> okay. Let's see. Blender a little bit that edge. Let's keep the softness there. And now I want to come back in just a little bit. This is about 40 minutes. I'm going to work just a little bit longer and start adding in the lighter color in here. Yeah, I'm. this is my guess of what I should be doing. I'm hoping this works. I'm just going over it really lightly in direction of fur, kind of spazzing it a little bit with this white Caran d'Ache luminance pencil. I've already laid down a little bit of color with the Caput Mortem, but now I want this to be considerably lighter. So I am coming in with this Caran d'Ache white. <clears throat> 
and just trying to play off the shadows that I've already placed in here a little bit. Give it some white clumpy fur highlights. I'm really hoping this works. If it doesn't, you know, we'll figure something else out, but I, I, I just think this is what I want to do. Trying to limit my colors. I've already used whites up here, the Karen Dash white up there. So I'm just trying to <laughs> find a way to lighten up some of this fur. Sometimes drawing is experimenting. And I can use this as kind of a burnishing, not burnishing, glazing tool to give it overall lighter appearance to that fur. See how I can do that? That's the flyaway fur. So we're going to give it little flyaways. Don't worry about the hard line right here. I'm going to go over that with a burnisher. See how this fur is flying now? So it is working. Pay a little bit more attention about how his fur blends here at the edge of the color change. I'm always paying attention to the way the fur would lay on his little body, going in that direction as I color. You could say I'm coloring, I guess. Not really, kind of, sort of. And then I'm thinking, okay, there might be some fur going in that direction. There's probably some fur I can kind of see in the picture of fur going in that direction. This is the area I was trying not to <clears throat> emphasize too much. Being a little haphazard, back and forth, clumps. I think down here. I can use that background color as part of my depth of color. Just kind of the beauty of choosing to use a colored background. You can absolutely cover it with color and layer it up, or you can actually use some of it to your advantage. Still a little spazzy, but that's okay because I'm going to burnish it my colorless blender. <clears throat> okay. Do you see the fur kind of showing up now? A little bit of shadow in there. Too bad. So what I'll do now is I'll go over it with my blender to further bring out some depth and dimension in this white fur because as we already know the blender will give us even more layers because we just always go in the direction of the fur. Imagine the clumps of fur not each individual hair, but the clumps and how they would lay. <clears throat> there we go. So what I'm probably gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and stop this, I think, because I don't want this to get too crazy long. And I will come back here and 
a little bit more burnishing on this side. I'm going to add some darker colors here for the shadows. A little bit more burnishing here. And then we will work on coming back in part four with a little bit more fine tuning on this middle section. Okay, and who knows, possibly we'll get to the water droplets. This is the part that I told you I wasn't too worried about. I'm gonna burnish this shadow out and smooth out that edge so it looks more natural. See how that works? Okay. So hopefully this helps give you an idea of fur and fur texture. I could actually go over this several times with different layers and each layer would bring another whole dimension of fur texture. It just depends on how much time I want to spend on a piece. I love how this blender just helps give the flyaways at the edge of the fur like that. Better than any pencil technique could. It's just awesome. All right, so we've got a really good start on this lower part. On the next one, we will come back, add a little bit more detail. I'm gonna double check in the meantime, make sure I've got these looking accurate for what they really should be. Just kind of double check the references that I had found. See, look at that, with using the blender, I'm sorry, I get distracted. I just, I get distracted and I start, I keep working. And this is what happens when I, <laughs> when I draw, I'm like, okay, just my husband would be like, let's do dinner, dinner's ready, or let's go, or let's do this, or let's do that. Okay, just a minute, just a minute. 15 minutes later, are you done? Well, no, I just wanna do this little part. I just need to do this little bit. He has so much patience with me. I am blessed. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> okay. We will call it the end of part three right now. <laughs>